All right, this is the second video going over common objections to the scriptural doctrine of repentance and refuting it. So another common objection and argument against repentance by the antinomian, anti-repentance heretics is they'll say, well, God repented in the Bible. So does that mean that God is repenting of sin or having God this or over sin? Okay, but here's what happens. Here's what they fail to realize is that there are different types of repentance in the Bible, and that repentance in the context of salvation is not always the same as repentance after salvation or when God repents, okay? I'm gonna show you two examples of where God repents, and I'll show you how it's not repenting in having godly sorrow because God does not need salvation. God is sinless, God is perfect. God is who provides salvation. So turn to, in your uh, King James Bible, not your modern Vatican versions that come from the Catholic Church and uh, corrupt, though the doctrines of the Bible corrupt pure doctrines, corrupt the important key doctrines of the faith, like salvation and the gospel. This is a uh, turn to Jonah chapter 3 and verse number 10. And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he said uh, that he would do unto them, and he did it not. Okay, so God repenting, but what's he repenting of? He's changing his mind, okay? He was going to punish them, but then when he saw that they turned from their evil way, he changed his mind and repented and said, no, I'm not going to do that, okay? So when God repents, he's often just changing his mind. Another example of that, or also he can have regret too. I'm going to show you an example of that. Turn to Genesis chapter number six. You know, the very beginning of your Bible, Genesis chapter six. Uh... Get there. Genesis 6. Here's another example of God repenting in this sense. He is repenting in the sense of he's changing his mind, having regret. Genesis chapter. Genesis chapter. Where is it? Yeah, Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 to 6 in your, in your King James Bible. It says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually, and, and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Okay, so what's what's happening here? Well, God is repenting. He's regretting the fact that he even created man, because man was so wicked during this time. In, in Genesis 6, uh, Noah and his family were the only righteous people on earth. Okay, so that's repentance in the sense of God changing his mind. So when God repents, he's not repenting of sin. He's not repenting and having God this sorrow to salvation. Because again, God does not need salvation. God is sinless and God is who provides salvation. Okay. But now I'm going to show you different types of repentance in the Bible. So that's repentance of God change, where God is changing his mind. Now I'm going to show you an example of where repentance means to actually turn from an action. Um, Ezekiel chapter number 14. Turn there. Ezekiel 14. And verse number six. Ezekiel 14, verse six. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Repent and turn yourselves from your idols, and turn away from the, your faces from all your abominations. So here you have an example, repent and turn from your idols. So he's saying to repent and turn from your idolatry. Another example of where repentance means to turn from an action. Ezekiel 18 and verse number 30. Therefore I will judge you, a house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord, repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so your iniqui so iniquity shall not be your ruin. That was Ezekiel 18.20. Now another example of repentance meaning to turn from an action because uh, again, proving the point that there's different types of repentance in the Bible, is Acts chapter 8. Turn there. Acts chapter 8. Uh, look at Acts. Sorry, I'm still getting used to using a physical King James Bible, so I'm figuring out, still trying to figure out where all the books are. Cause I'm used to doing it on my computer. Book of Acts chapter 8. Uh, 8 verse, where is it? Uh, 
Here it is, Acts chapter 8, verse number 22. Sorry, I forgot the exact verse reference. I thought it was verse 18, but Acts chapter 8, verse 22. And the context is basically where Simon the sorcerer was trying to basically give Peter money, saying, hey, because he saw them performing the gifts of the Holy Ghost, and he was saying, hey, you know, he, he wanted to basically give them money so they could like impart that gift to him. Uh, but look what Peter says in Acts 8, 22. Repent, therefore, of thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. So now you have repent of that wickedness. So again, repenting, turning from his action, his wickedness. So there's repentance in a definition in the context of basically turning from an action. Now you got repentance to salvation. And what's that? 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse, beginning at verse number 8. For, I th for though I made you sorry with the letter, I did not repent. For though I did, I did repent, uh, for I perceive that this the same epistle hath made you sorry, but it were but though it were but for a season. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that you sorrow to repentance, for you made sorry after a godly manner, that you might receive damage by us in, in nothing. Verse 10, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Verse 11, For behold, uh, this self same thing, that you sorrowed after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you, yea, what caring, clearing of yourselves, yea, what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge, in all things, uh, ye have approved, ye, you have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. So that's repentance in the context of salvation, being godly sorrow, feeling godly sorrow over your sin. Godly sorrow work as repentance to salvation, put it that way. So that's the error and the folly of the uh, antinomians. They, they, they think they're basically trying to think that every single time the word repent is used, it must mean the same thing. No, it's not. God is repenting, but he's changing his mind. Okay, he's having regret over doing something. Okay, and it's not saying he made a mistake, it's just saying that he is just simply changing his mind. Then you got uh, repentance in the sense of turning from an action. Then you got repentance to salvation, being God with sorrow over sins. So I wanted to go ahead and refute that argument of trying to use God repenting as somehow proof that Repentance is not part of salvation because, of course, God does not need salvation. God is who provides salvation. So don't be deceived by the little antinomian arguments they try to use against repentance. Repentance is, is biblical, scriptural doctrine, and anyone who says otherwise is denying what the Word of God says. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.